He can't buy my forgiveness with some cheap-ass trinket. It's a gift, Tyler. You know what gift-giving means in Clinket culture, and what it means to refuse one. Exactly. Seriously? That was childish. What is wrong with you? No need to be so dramatic. I'm the one who's being dramatic. Oh, God. So, that was an asshole move. To put it mildly. I deserve that. Sorry I tossed the ring. I'm sorry, too. I just hoped we could wrap everything up with a grand gesture and move on to our perfectly normal lives. Uh, I think I'm just gonna force this open. You sure? We're not in a rush, and we'll have to fix it. I'm sure. My life got a whole lot better when I stopped letting her set the terms. Okay, go ahead. So much for the fairy tale mood. Whatever. We're not ten anymore. Funny. Don't remember asking for your opinion on the subject. Tyler! What? What Tyler means is, a fresh start is what we both need. Of course. Is there something I can do for you? Hold on. You sure we've seen everything? I think we've got a good sense of the situation. It's time to confront her. All right. We're back, with details that should help your memory. Oh, really? Yes, really. We were buying groceries, and then you, you stormed in, threatening to call in debts and demanding that Marianne talk to you. It turned into an argument. So you guys went into the office and blasted that song you used to dance to all the time. Call in debts? I never, like I'm some kind of lone shark. When did this supposedly occur? Well, our memories don't exactly have timestamps. <laughs> I can't be expected to take these accusations seriously if you can't even recall basic details. April 2004. Isn't that when she stopped trying to pay off her debts? Mm -mm, no, that doesn't sound right. I'm sure we never fought about money, though. I was always forgiving with your mother. I could see how she was struggling. Yeah, and you loved lording it over her, didn't you? Allison. Excuse me? Young lady, I help others because it's the right thing to do. You all would have starved if it weren't for me. And we're grateful for that. It's just an emotional subject for us, right, Allison? Yeah. I never said you two were arguing about money. We found a pamphlet for conversion therapy in Marianne's bedroom. I know you. I know how did, hateful you can- Did you give her the pamphlet? Is that why you guys fought? I really have no idea what you're talking about, and I was never cruel to Marianne. I did everything I could to help her, to help you all. Even when she fought me, even when she screamed and spit in my face for the effort, even when she... even when she didn't deserve it. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Calm down. Look, we know you took care of us, and we're grateful. But I really need you to answer one question. When you two fought, was it ever about me? It was always about a lot of things. She was struggling with everything at the end. Did you try to convince Marianne to send Tyler to some kind of program? No, and I think you should go now. Tessa, I'm here to figure out if Marianne tried to kill me because of who I am. Do you get that? I do, I just... Then why won't you give us a straight answer? I... I truly don't know what went on in her mind that day. And it will always be my deepest regret that I didn't see it coming. 
Now I understand that this is an emotional topic for you both, and fortunately for you, I keep forgiveness at the heart of my relationships. You're so fucking righteous. Why did you dump Marianne when she was at her worst? I will not be dragged back into this. You need to go. Now. Can we have our groceries? Ah, uh, um, Michael already put them in your trunk. Cool. Bye, Tom. What are you thinking? Just trying to wrap my brain around all that. You know, we might have actually gotten to the truth if you hadn't lashed out at her. Are you serious right now? You were on her case the whole time. Don't turn this on me! It's obvious she's guilty of something, and that's why she doesn't want to talk about it! Ugh, that sanctimonious bitch! Tyler Ronan. The prodigal son returns. Yep. Look at you. I didn't even recognize you at first. You're doing a great job. Uh, thanks? Okay, let's see if I can still do this. Five bucks says you miss. Ow! <laughs> I win, pay up. Oh, shut up! Did I mention it would be an all-cash offer? Do it. Yeah? Yep. Great. I'll set it all up and, uh, send you the details. Later, hon. So, Tina? Tina West, our realtor. Oh, that Tina. What'd she need? Well, we have an interested buyer. Tina's gonna show him the house day after tomorrow. Oh, great. Apparently he'd be paying cash, but he's just in town for a few days, so. Mm. I mean, we're not signing anything in blood. It's just a showing. I know. Look, we both need this money. And it'll take at least a few weeks, right? There's plenty of time to figure out all this Marianne stuff. It's fine. You did it. It's done. Let's move on. Uncle Eddie warned me about this, but I didn't listen. Oh yeah? What did Uncle Eddie have to say? that we've led pretty different lives. We might not really see eye to eye like we used to. Ah, I see. Chief Brown said you shouldn't trust me, so you don't. Got it. Why do you shut people out like this? You're literally talking inside my head. Not sure how I could shut you out even if I tried. You want to talk about family, Eddie? I guess family calls social services when you're having a hard time, huh? And then breaks the law to gloat that you're gonna lose your fucking kids. It's your fault she lost it, Eddie. You, and Tessa, and everyone else in this goddamn town. Okay. Let's talk. What? That's bullshit! He didn't forget to water your goddamn plants. He lied. You know what? Never mind. Eddie, you keep trying to point your finger at Tessa, but... You have to take responsibility for your part in our mother's death. I've asked myself over and over for the past ten years what I could have done different. I know I made a big mistake with you two here. And you've got every right to be angry. Being a father, well, it's a pretty tough job. 
I've tried my best. And I'd like to try my best with you too, Tyler, if you want it. I'm sorry, Eddie. It's not that easy. You're right about one thing, though. It's time we move on. See you around, Chief. Uncle? I, uh... It's all good, Allison. Let's have a talk later. Just us, okay? All right. I'll see you later. You should get going, Tyler. I'm sorry, kids. <laughs> Typical. Running away when things get tough. I don't buy that Marianne pushed you away. You turned your back on her. And now you're making excuses. Like always, you destroyed our family. You don't even have the decency to admit it. I know I've made mistakes. All I can do now is say that I'm sorry. If I could give you back your mother, I would. I don't deserve your forgiveness, especially yours, Tyler. But if there's a place for me in your lives, I'd like to be there. I have to know something first. Are you good with who I am? You went through a very challenging time, and anyone could come out on the other side confused. There's help available out there, if you'll take it. Keep your help. So that's it then. We're done because I believe something different than you? No. It's because you don't believe in me. I see. Then I guess there's nothing more to say. wasn't it. I think we just need to break the lock. There must be something in here we can use to get it open, and preferably without destroying the box. Asshole even dumped the drawers. Yeah, that'll break a lock. Let's not waste time. I'm not going on that dock. After what I did for you? You're really gonna say no to this? Well, no, but... I just can't keep doing this. Every time we think we understand, something new pops up. This might be our only shot to figure out who our father is. Who gives a shit about that asshole? I have a father, and I almost lost him because you won't stop. Don't blame me because Chief Brown fucked Marianne over. Hi guys, what are you doing here? I, uh, brought you stuff from the office. Y you're a good worker. I think Tessa will come around when she's had a chance to clear her head. That's nice, Tom. Thanks. I'm gonna head on inside. Freezing my butt off out here. Okay, uh, thanks. Is Tyler not around today?
We had a fight. I think we just needed to get out of each other's hair for a little bit. I'm sorry to hear that. You were so happy he was coming home. Oh, it's okay. We'll get over it. I really hope so. <clears throat> so, Tessa told me a little bit about what happened at the cemetery. If you're going to lecture me, save it. She had it coming. She went behind Marianne's back. And almost got us killed. If you want, I could go out there, see how he's feeling, and if he's ready to talk. What do you think? Whatever. I don't think it's gonna do much good. He's convinced he's meant to be alone. I thought I was the exception, but I was wrong. Well, I don't mind trying if it might patch things up between you two. Oh shit, I'm gonna be late for my lunch with Dee. I still need to change and stuff, but I can drop you off at the store if you want. Sure, thanks. No, Michael, thank you for listening. I mean it. I feel so bad about missing your birthday. I thought about making you something, but I was a little strapped for time, so. No, I get it. With your brother back, I see where your priorities are now. What? No, no, it's not. Relax, I'm just kidding. Hey, your brother didn't tag along today? No. He didn't really want to show his face around here after the mess he made yesterday, huh? It's not really any of your business. I know things sounded pretty heated, but it was just family stuff. Oh yeah? That way it broke into the archive? And assaulted Brown because of family stuff? Look, we're all worried about you. This isn't the Allison we know. The Allison you know? Yeah, the sweet, smart girl who'd never hurt anyone on purpose. The Chief works hard for all of us. He doesn't deserve to be treated that way. I'm sorry, but I really don't want to have this conversation right now. I, I had a rough morning. I just want to be okay. to just let go. What's happening? I'm so scared, Allison. Me too. I don't want to go. And maybe... Maybe we should tell them the truth. Are you sure? I don't know. Maybe. But what if we get in trouble and then we both on, get sent away? Hey, Chief Brown, wait. I, uh... I went back to the house and got these three kids. They, uh, they wouldn't let me take anything else. I'm, I'm sorry. Sam, please tell them to let us stay together. Please. Oh, gosh. Please. I, I don't have that kind of power. Sam. Oh, kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> ah, oh, damn it. What happened? I busted my finger with that stupid wrench. <sighs> Grab me a gauze. Should be in that cupboard over there. Hey, an encyclopedia of astronomy. I have this one. You, uh, gonna browse through all my stuff before handing me that gauze? Right. Uh, sorry. 
But what if we can't? If she doesn't understand why all this is important to me, then maybe we're just too different. We were finally about to get some answers and she fucking ran off. Well, can you blame her? <sighs> Avoiding the problem doesn't make it go away. She's so fixated on selling the house. It's like she's trying to bury the past. All of it. Even the good parts. Look, I'm not picking sides here. Okay, but she's been murder house girl ever since it happened. Now she's got a chance to put it behind her and start fresh. <laughs> Shit, I'd be pretty eager too. Yeah, well, I was the kid who killed his mom, and I still found a way to confront my shit. I mean, I'm here, doing the work. Even though, every second, I've got to fight the urge to run straight back. To fireweed, you mean? Yeah. When I first got there, all I could think about was getting out. It felt like a cage. But after a while, it started to feel more like a shell. I figured out who I was in there. But now, I've got to work out how to be that person out here. Well, if it makes you feel any better, none of us really know what we're doing. Like, shit may look bleak now, but your sister's never gonna give up on you. And you can lean on me too, if you want. Just be careful, okay? Got a bad left shoulder. <laughs> I'll keep it in mind. Thanks for listening. Don't mention it. So you gonna tell me what's in the cooler, or what? I could tell you. Or I could watch you squirm a bit longer. Ugh. You're a terrible person. You know that? <laughs> you betcha. Don't you say anything. I Come on. Pull up on the rod. Uh, <laughs> Next time, huh? Damn. It's this tiny fishing pole. I'm not used to it. That's it. Blame your tools. Hey, can I... can I ask you something that's pretty personal? Sure. Take off the gloves. You, uh... You've been with people, right? Uh, romantically? Uh, yeah. A few. Have you? Uh, no. Not really. That's kind of surprising. Well, people say it's about finding your other half, but I don't really feel like anything's missing. Which is actually super healthy. I guess the way I see it is it's not about being completed, but having like someone to spend the ride with, you know? Huh. Yeah, I can see that. You want my take on it? Sure. Heartbreak sucks. Look, I stopped listening to the entire indie folk genre just because I was dumped at a show once. But I put myself back out there just like everyone who's ever gotten their heart stomped on. Because when you meet someone who really sees you, you don't have to pretend anymore. Yeah, that all sounds nice, but it's just not me. A true lone wolf? I can respect that. Hey. I tried calling you. Yeah, I know. Let's not do this, okay? Do what? Fight about me not answering. I needed some time. So did you. You could have at least texted me back to say you were okay. Then I wouldn't have had to send Michael out on a welfare check. God, Allison, it's only been a day. So? What's up? I have something I need to show you. Can we just sit down for a sec? Okay. So, what is it? I was just at Sam's. He's not our father. How do you know? I asked him, point blank. How can you trust that guy? He's such a mess. Exactly. 
He doesn't have anything to lose, so why would he go through all that trouble? I guess that's it then. Just trust me. He's not the one. There's something else. Look at this. This was taken in 1992 when Marianne first moved to Delos Crossing. See that ladder? Sam told me the barn has a loft. He helped her build it. Apparently she never told anyone about it. And it's still there? As far as he knows, yeah. What do you think? Should we give it a shot? We've come this far. And a hidden loft? That's got secret shit written all over it. Let's go. There are like a million possibilities. Probably quicker just to see if she left us a hint somewhere. There you are, trusty crowbar. I think I'm just gonna break this open. I mean, really? This is all pretty elaborate. I think she was trying to tell us something. Whatever she wants us to know, it's clearly in here. I'm done with the rest of it. Did it just get darker in here? Ollie, she, uh, she noticed. I was her son. Why does she have a photo of that tree locked in here? What? Who is that? Leo Ronan. She had a baby before us? December 2nd, 1992 to January 31st, 1993. God, he was so young. We had a brother. Why didn't she tell us about him? Why didn't she tell us any of this? I mean, it's fucking terrible. That's why. Allie, did we do the right thing opening this? We did. It's better we know what happened, even... even if it's hard. And there's one more thing we need to see. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. I'm going to kill you! I'm going to kill you! I'm going to kill you! was lying. Marianne couldn't face being separated from her kids again, and the only way to make sure that never happened was for all of us to go together. I know it in my heart. I saved you. I saved us. I know. I did the right thing. You want to go back inside? Yeah.
Hey, peep what I just found downstairs. What do you think? A little have aged well, or just gone bad? Cheers, I guess. I can't believe Tom thought we'd buy that story. And that I almost did. Yeah, I still can't believe he and Marianne. What the hell did she see in him? She was probably just really, really lonely after she lost Leo. I could never get that lonely. Listen, with everything that's been going on, it got me thinking. About our voice. Like, that maybe we should stop using it. What? I just don't trust it. And I think we'll be better off without it. Better off without it, Ellie? Or better off without me? What? I don't know. It just sounds like you want to break the one thing that's holding us together. The one thing? Really? Yeah. Things haven't exactly been peachy between us lately. <sighs> Maybe because you get exactly like this whenever I try to tell you what I need. Like this? Like I'm making it all up just to spite you. I'm not. I'm just tired of taking all the hits. Wow. Okay. You know what? You're right. The Mad Hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the Moon Hag, but she did not kill him, because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted the day he would emerge to once again hunt Spaces, the wise uh, princess exactly and earn back his left hand. Yeah. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the Mad Hunter. Hi. Hey. Something wrong? What? Uh, no, I uh, just thought I'd check in. You sure? Well, actually, I've been wanting to write a new story, but can't seem to sit down and start anything. <sighs> well, maybe you don't actually want to write then. Maybe you're right. It's just... What? I feel 
Like there are these words inside of me and, and if, if I don't write them down, they're just gonna tear their way out. Whoa, that was dark. Just forget I said that. So, what's new on Kodiak Island? Nothing, uh, just me, 2,000 bears, and the occasional tourist to rescue. So, you're loving your new life? As much as you're loving yours, I guess. Did you hear about Tom losing the election? Yeah, Michael told me. All I gotta say is karma. How'd Tessa take it? Not well. I wonder what they're gonna do next. Yeah, don't really care, actually. Okay, um, I'll talk to you later then. Okay. Take care. You too. I can't believe Antonio convinced Michael to adopt a cat. Or a fur tyrant, as he calls them. Is it that fixing the sink sounds more pleasant than writing right now? Really love having to drive that 20 extra miles for groceries, but better that than the awkwardness of going to the Vecchi's. Donate my shit for all I care. At least some of them got what they deserved.
to work. Come on, Allison. Hey, Allison. Guess you're not answering your landline either. Just wanted to check in and see if we're still on for dinner tomorrow. I'm making my special Eddie-licious fish tacos. Oh, uh, sorry, gotta run. Uh, Mayor Scrooge just walked into my office. Love you, little moose. Hey, princess. Well, um, uh, I'm doing like you asked and calling ahead to let you know I'm on my way out to place that door so um that's up see you soon Even the birds are coming back. Hmm. The wood's actually in pretty good shape. I might be able to make something with it. I wish you guys would have stuck around to keep me company. I should try to fix this up before summer. It'd be nice to swim off it again. I should probably seal this a little better, or just embrace my future as a rat lady. I could stare at this all day.
A friend? What is that? The princess frowned, for she realized that the two tiny thieves were as lonely as she was. A friend is someone you love and care for. Someone you would never hurt. Yeah, right. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a solitary goblin in a big wooden house. That goblin had not always been so solitary. She had a twin, and when they were younger, they were inseparable. Together, they rescued princesses and outsmarted ice trolls and even trapped a mad hunter. But as she grew older, the goblin sister decided that she'd had enough of adventures. So while her brother went out to explore the world, she stayed behind as guardian of the big wooden house. For it is not on all of us to adventure. Some must stay behind to tell the story and to hold shelter for those who may come back and those who never left. <laughs>